everybody. Last time we froze our greens for use later and now it's later. So we're going to make a squash, kale, and white bean stew. So this soup calls for butternut squash, which I have here. This is from Bonner Springs. I bought it in um, September or October and it's been waiting patiently um, just as a centerpiece. Uh, so this is local for sure. And then we're using some vegetable broth and some spices and beans. Um, the beans we actually already cooked and froze, um, so we'll be using those from the freezer, not these. Garlic and bay leaves, and then this is the key ingredient, which we froze back on October 19th. That is our kale, and so that's what's going in the soup. That's how you know they're local and fresh. Lots of dirt. Little dirt never hurt anybody. So Sergio is doing battle with the uh, butternut squash, and I'm pretty sure he's winning. Looks like it. One down, three to go. Meanwhile, I have prepared our spices. Garlic, which Sergio minced, and then we have bay leaves, cumin, uh, crushed red pepper, and sage. Ideally, you would use fresh sage for this, but we don't have any. It is winter, so we're using our dried sage, and it will be just as good. Guess what? We just found out that this recipe calls for an onion, and we don't have one. So, uh, my obvious solution is to replace it with another ingredient. And, looking around at what we have, I discovered that an apple would be a perfect replacement. If you're nervous, then you're just like Emily. But I really think that the apple is going to bring out the sweetness of the, and, and that, that really kind of um, acid kind of sweetness from the squash. So I am actually really excited about this happy accident, and I think that a little bit of apple sauteed with the spices that Emily has prepped it's going to be the perfect replacement. I get nervous when we don't follow the recipe. You can smell those spices and the garlic already. Uh, and it's a wonderful scent. Well, you can smell it, but they can't. Oh, yeah. The other thing you might be smelling if you were here is this, which is what we're using to saute. Now, the recipe is totally vegan if you don't use this butter, but I have fallen madly in love with this butter. It's from the Chateau Dairy Farm uh, in Missouri, and they take very good care of their cows, and the butter that these cows produce, it's better than any other butter I've ever, ever tasted. And it's creamy and rich and has so much character. So we are using butter um, here to saute. Um, I had to do a little convincing, much to Sergio's dismay, we're going forth with the butter, but it'll be a good soup. The garlic and the spices have been sautéing for a couple minutes, and now it's time to add my secret ingredient, the apple. So we're going to add all of that apple, and if you're not adventurous, in your case it would be onion, and just give that a nice little stir, make sure nothing is sticking, oh, I think this is a good idea. It smells so good. And uh, after these uh, soften a little bit, we're going to add the squash. So, in fact, I don't think they need to soften a whole lot. Apple is a little bit softer than onion anyway. Uh, and, uh, and it's a lot more watery. So, I think I'm going to go ahead and add the squash. Is that okay with you, Emily? Yep. All right. So, now we're adding the squash. And look at what a beautiful orange color that is. We'll give that another stir. I think these go really well together. I think you'll be happy, Emily. Oh, that smells really good. I'm having tiny little heart palpitations. <laughs> okay, so we're using 
Swanson's vegetable broth. It's really good. Ideally, we would be using vegetable broth that we made ourselves. But I will confess to you, I have made vegetable broth twice. I didn't like it either time. So we're still working on that. I love that sizzle. Okay, so back in um, September, I made a whole big batch of Great Northern Beans, like a whole pound. I cooked them up and then froze them in these two cup portions. So this one I put in the fridge last night to start thawing, and it's properly thawed now. Um, so it's ready to use, and the beans are all totally cooked and ready to go. It's just as good as if you were opening a can. Um, this kale we've had out of the freezer for, I don't know, half an hour maybe, and it's already thawing quite nicely. Um, uh, this was from October, as you all remember, and I've frozen it into two portions, and we are deciding whether to use one portion or two for this soup that, um, that we're not using the recipe on. So the greens are pretty well cooked since we blanched them, and you don't want to thaw them all the way. You want them to, well, I want them when they're just thawed enough to, to pull apart, but not totally thawed. You don't want to do that. You just want to let, the, let them warm up in the stew. So I think one batch might be enough, or half a batch. What do you think, Sergio? That looks good. Let's stir it up and see. The soup has been uh, simmering for about 10 minutes now, and the time has come to add the beans, which is what I'm about to do. Now, obviously, as you already know, these beans have been cooked already, and so they don't need to cook any longer. They just need to heat up, and I'm going to very gently fold them in so that we don't completely break them, um, but rather allow them to mingle with the rest of the ingredients. How about salt and pepper? I think salt and pepper is a great idea. Okay, I will add salt and pepper. So I have a big book of food preservation materials. Um, I got this from when I took a class on food preservation with the University of Missouri Extension program. And here, this handy dandy guide on freezing vegetables has taught me a lot of things. And it has a section here on thawing and using. And follow the guidelines below to keep frozen vegetables safe and preserve their color, flavor, texture, and nutritive value. Don't thaw frozen vegetables before cooking, with a few exceptions. Corn on the cob is one of those exceptions, which we're not having tonight. In addition, greens will cook more uniformly if thawed slightly and broken apart before cooking. Thaw in the refrigerator or under cold running water. Well, the time has come. Our soup is ready. We turn the heat off and we let it sit for a couple minutes just to kind of let it cool down a little. And now it's time to serve it. Smells really good. It looks pretty too. I love the colors here. Too bad you guys can't have some too. So to accompany our meal this evening, we have farm to market Grissini breadsticks. Um, it's a local bakery. Farm to market is. They're very good. And so This looks really good. I'm excited. We'll see what you think about my secret ingredient. I don't know. I'm reserving judgment. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.